tonight by our visiting Eagle Scout, Mr. Coleman Glasscock. Mr. Mark Phillips will perform our invocation. see such a nice crowd out here tonight. I'm always glad to have lots of folks. Let us pray this night. <coughs> Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We're grateful for our knowledge of thee. We're grateful for all the blessings that we have. We're grateful for this great country in which we live. As great as it is, it still needs thy guidance, and especially these days, it needs thy loving hand. If we can remember the two great commandments that thy son taught us, love thee and to love one another. We need that more in this world. We're grateful for this night to be able to gather here as a city council and those that represent the city of Roxborough and those Boy Scouts that are here tonight. Grateful for that great organization. Pray now that that will be with us as we meet and go through agenda and items. And we may be led and guided to do what is right for the city of Roxborough. We're grateful for the employees of Roxborough and pray that I will watch over them. That thy guiding hand will bless them with safety as many do things that just other folks don't want to do and things that are can be hazardous to their health as well and life. Bless them and keep them and <coughs> as we thank thee for them. Again, be with us this night as we strive to be good servants not only to thee, but to our fellow man as well. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you. Please, you're welcome to rise as you're able to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Glasscock, if you'll come forward, please. Thank you. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I will now call our meeting to order. Welcome all of you who have joined us this evening and uh, hope our proceedings will be of benefit to you. We have a lot of guests with us tonight. We're delighted to see all of you. Our first item will be the adoption of our agenda. Yes, sir. Thank you for that reminder. Yes, uh, Mr. Baker has had some um, surgery this week, and uh, he will be joining. He will be watching us on YouTube, but we don't have an interchange with uh, him to be able to watch our meeting. He will be able to watch our meeting, but not participate. But we welcome him on YouTube and know that uh, we wish him well and hope that his uh, recovery will be a swift and complete one. Thank you for that. We do need a motion to excuse Mr. Baker tonight. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Chandler and seconded by Ms. Petty that we excuse Mr. Baker. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. So we'll move on now to adopt our agenda. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Chandler and seconded by Mr. Phillips that we approve our agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that motion carries also. Thank you. Next is the consideration of our consent agenda.
I see they're working on the uh, one five eleven North Main. Yes. Mm -hmm, I see they're working on that one. Uh, Chief, did uh, Mr. Phillips need a badge? It was an eventful night. I tell you, I, um, I tell you one of the amazing things that amazed me was there was his eyes, and by that I mean he would stop, and turn around to go something. I said, "What? What was going on?" It was a bicycle going down the boulevard? I said, I "Can't see anything." There were things he saw that I just never saw. They, they're, I guess their heads on a swivel at all times looking for things. And, <laughs> and we were looking for, we were looking for a, a bus, that same bicycle a little bit later. And we go by one place and, and we pass it and he says, I think he's back there. Well, it was at the Timberland. I think he's back there at Timberland. I said, why? Because I said his bicycle's back there. How'd you see that? It was all the way up, up under the canopy. And, Sure enough, that's where it was. Just, just heads on a swivel. Good eyes. And it was a good time. We'll try it again. Get in the summertime when a little more action goes on. So, <laughs> Any other comments on the consent agenda? <clears throat> Would there be a motion? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Outlaw and seconded by Ms. Petty that we approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Next, we have some recognition tonight. The first is a proclamation for Coleman Glasscock, Eagle Scout Troop 223. And I will read your proclamation, Mr. Glasscock. It's the proclamation honoring Coleman Durant Glasscock, whereas the Boy Scouts of America was founded on February 8, 1910, and has grown to be a vital force in the development of our youth through its many programs, which encourage the ability of its members to do things for themselves and others. And whereas one of the major objectives of the scouting program is to develop citizenship through community involvement, and in addition to working for citizenship merit badges, scouts are actively involved in community projects. Scout Coleman earned 36 merit badges on his trail to Eagle, served his troop as chaplain, aide, and patrol leader, and senior patrol leader, whereas Coleman Durant Glasscock is a member of Boy Scout Troop 223, having completed the requirements for and having been examined by an Eagle Scout Board of Review, was found worthy of the rank of Eagle Scout on October 12, 2023, and Eagle Court of Honor on March 9, 2024. Now be therefore proclaimed by the Mayor and City Council that on behalf of all our citizens, we do hereby extend this expression of our admiration and pride in the skills and accomplishments of Coleman Durant Glasscock, this ninth day of April, 2024. Mr. Glasscock, you'd like to come forward? Congratulations. Before you sit down, Stand at the podium and tell us about your eagle project. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I want to know. My eagle project was a um, pergola at my church, Mount Harmony Baptist Church, and um, we built it back in September, I believe. And so Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Next, I'll call up Chief Hess for some introductions. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of council, members of the public. It is my honor and privilege this evening to introduce two new officers to the police department. Uh, to my far right is Officer Tim Taylor. Uh, Tim was born and raised in Granville County prior to starting his law enforcement career with Roxbury Police Department, worked for the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Uh, if you can't tell, he enjoys working out. <laughs> <laughs> A little side note about Tim, 
uh, I recently saw a video of him curling a tree that's probably about the length of the council table. Yeah. So I'm 100% serious. He's oh, extremely wow. physically fit. Uh, and in fact, I think you got the PT award for your uh, BLET program, correct? So he, he won the physical fitness award for his police academy. Uh, Tim got into law enforcement because he looks forward to helping people, uh, looks forward to a great career, and intends to stay with the Roxburgh Police Department for that career. To my nearest right is uh, Officer Caleb Clayton. Uh, Caleb is born and raised here in Person County. He went to BLET, Advanced Granville Community College with Tim, was sworn with us in February with Tim, and prior to that, he served with the Granville County Sheriff's Office for five years, obtaining the rank of captain in the detention center. Uh, he became a police officer and chose the Roxburgh Police Department so that he could make a positive role, or be a positive role model in the community where he lived and grew up, and plans to serve and protect the citizens of his hometown and uh, sends his appreciation to Lieutenant Ryan Ford, who recruited him from the Sheriff's Office in Granville County to come to be a police officer here. So we're very fortunate to have these two young men. They have uh, about six weeks left in our uh, field training program. And just as a matter of uh, information for the public, it takes us 13 months to hire a police officer, send them to the police academy, put them through our 13-week internal field training program before you see an officer on solo patrol. So they get well over a year of training before they wind up being on the streets to serve the citizens of Roxborough uh, in a solo capacity. They're outstanding in their field. Uh, they've been a tremendous asset already to the department and to the community. And so with that, I'll allow them to say any words they'd like to say. Chief, welcome new officers. We appreciate your willingness to serve us. Our next section of our meeting is our public comment. And uh, for the benefit of everyone who's present, and again, we have some folks who have not been with us before, uh, we have uh, been providing for the last few months just some guidelines for our public comment so that everyone is clear about how this process, what this period is about. And uh, anyone may sign up prior to the meeting for the opportunity to, direct, to address the City Council during the public comment segment. The City Clerk will provide the sign-up sheet with name, address, and topic comments to myself, the Mayor. And comments are limited to five minutes as timed by the Mayor, with courtesy and decorum requested in all matters presented. We welcome and value all comments. However, the comment period is not for dialogue, and the City Council will confer with staff or its attorney on citizen matters as needed. If you desire a response for your issue, we request you provide contact information as specified on this sheet, and some of you have done that. The record of the public comment period will be summarized in the minutes of the meeting like every other item heard or decided by the City Council. So with that said, we'll call upon our first uh, individual here, uh, Ms. Patty Holmes. Please come up and take your place at the podium. And your five minutes begin when you start speaking. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Patty Holmes. I'm a citizen of resident of Person County uh, for the last 19 years. And then um, I'm here because I'm the founder, I'm the leader of Empoderate Latina. It's a group that they serve in um, around North Carolina, in Person County, and in other counties. So a lot of um, females come to the group, escaping for domestic violence. And also, uh, I want to address the femicide. It's a word and when a woman is killed. So I have a here, I'm here to request collaboration between Roxboro City and more than 20 organizations. The Centro Hispano is the one of our allies. We are allied with them. 
uh, working in this, uh, working together <coughs> to bring to the public, educate the public about femicide. Um, in, in a little bit, um, my, uh, my ally from the Centro Hispano, Berenice Malagón, she is going to tell us about numbers, uh, how many women has been killed since January and last year. And then, um, I'm just here because I'm an immigrant, and it's really hard to talk about domestic violence when you don't have a legal status. So as a female, as an immigrant, I would love to come together, no matter what is your color, no matter who you come from, and um, bring this issue to the eyes to everybody, and the law specifically, to protect women. So thank you so much for hearing me, and I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Holmes. Next, I see Annette Hampton. Did she uh, arrive? Excuse me? She's not here yet, okay. Then we'll move on then to Ms. Malagon. Good evening, everyone. My name is Berenice Malagon. I'm the PR and communications with El Centro Hispano. El Centro Hispano is um, the biggest and the, the largest um, Hispano-led nonprofit organization serving approximately 70 counties in North Carolina. Um, today, I'm here with Patty Holmes and other um, organizations talking about femicide. Um, we have a conversation with Mayor um, previously, and she requested us to bring some data regarding femicides in Roxboro. So we found. Um, that we had a femicide in February 2024. Um, Rolando Diaz Almaron um, was charged with felony assault by, by a strangulating and misdemeanor assault on a female um, that was here in Roxborough. And uh, last year in 2023, in March, uh, Patsy Ann Evelyn Rip, age 35, um, was killed, shot by a man that after, after that committed suicide. So we found two uh, femicides, one in, in, in Person County, one uh, in 2024 and one in 2023, and, t and these two femicides uh, occurred in Roxboro. Uh, but we also found that um, more than 40 um, cases or reports of uh, domestic violence and assault in Person County. So we have uh, also the numbers of, um, of the entire state in North Carolina, and we uh, um, lost in 2023 uh, 50, 57 women due to femicides. In 2024, we have been lost 16 women. That's why we are here. And we are uh, going to several counties in the state um, requesting for a proclamation um, to, first of all, to educate about what a femicide is and to prevent more cases like this, and to educate about how how um, important it is since young people to be um, aware about domestic violence and how to prevent these cases. So the proclamation that we are requesting is International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And this proclamation we are requesting to, to do um, Harry Bide by November 25th, so we are requesting this with a lot of in anticipation, I know that. But what we are looking here is to work together and to collaborate, uh, not only with you guys, but also with the police department to educate and to um, empower the women in the state. So that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Did Ms. Hampton arrive? I guess not yeah. then. Excuse me. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. 
Mr. John Rogers. On uh, around February 24th, uh, there was a Roxborough police car loitering outside of my house for a prolonged period of time, almost an hour, uh, while I was on my porch. I went inside to get my cell phone to take a video of this, uh, and then the car drove off. However, um, they didn't realize that I had a surveillance camera that caught the entire incident. Uh, not sure why. They thought it was necessary to hang out outside of my house. Um, I guess they uh, thought that that was the place to be due to uh, the fact that I've complained about a lot of issues I've had uh, in the community um, and my uh, uh, distaste with some of the activities uh, of the Roxbury Police Department. Um, but I don't have time to come to every meeting and complain about the you know harassment, so uh, I'm bringing this to you, so hopefully you can do something about it. Uh, I'm glad the, the new police guys are here to hear about this. Uh, hopefully they can take a lesson from it too. Um, but uh, I have the video and pictures of it. Um, I just trust it won't happen again um, because the next time I'll just give it to the NC Department of Justice or the Federal Department of Justice because um, I, I, I'm really sick of it. Thank you. This Mr. Carswell, is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, how's everybody doing this evening? I'm Trey Carswell. I'm the founder and CEO of Mook Films Devoted Production Studios. So we will be coming out here to the Roxborough area end of this month all through May filming a project. The project's entitled The Shot. The project is about the South African photographer Joseph Lowe who captured one of the most iconic photos in American history of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination. So my team and I will be coming out here to film the movie. Um, with that being said, this is a very powerful piece. Um, of course it takes place during the 60s, during a very uncomfortable time in America, like segregation in the civil rights era. But in this project, it showcased the love that happened between the African Americans and the Caucasians and just bringing unity. So it's an amazing project. I'm excited to be filming this down here in Roxborough. Now, we originally were going to shoot the film in the month of December of last year here, but because we didn't want to get into, I guess, in the way of tradition with you guys having your um, traditional holiday um, traditions throughout the um, city, um, we decided to push the project back. With that being said, we originally did put our application in and had it in as far as for filming dates, like for the exterior, like being outside in the downtown area. We already had things already, you know, processed and approved, but because we pushed it back, we didn't know we had to do another application. And like I said, our filming dates for our exterior shot downtown in the Roxbury area is somewhere in mid-May. And <coughs> I'm just, I guess I'm here to ask the council if you guys can just relook at our original application which I do have and the new one that we've also submitted as well but will put us outside of that 60 day marker with having the applications um, put forth. Now I've had an opportunity like I said to work with Chief Hess and, and Mr. Brooks and other individuals on the council but again like I said this is an amazing project. I'm excited to be bringing the team and myself down here to Roxboro to shoot a, a feature film to you know just spread light on this amazing area in North Carolina again. Um, I was introduced to North Carolina from a friend who's part of the production, or well, at least Roxboro. And again, I fell in love with the city, you know, working with Cole's Pharmacy and Miss Carol and just all the amazing businesses that are here. But um, I'm extremely excited to make this movie down here in, in the area. So um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carswell. I think we'll have to take that matter for further consideration. So just now you'll be communicated. <laughs> Again, after the council has the opportunity to do that. 
Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that we would, would like to come and address the council? If you, even if you didn't sign up in advance, you're welcome to come forward, state your name and address, and uh, have your five minutes. Since I don't see anyone moving, then we'll presume that our public comment period now is over. But it is available in every meeting if you think want to come and discuss anything of particular interest with the City Council. So thank you so much for your participation tonight. All right, we'll move on into our business. Indeed we do, Mayor. Uh, would you like to introduce them? Absolutely. Um, we do have a new public services director, a familiar face in the room. Uh, his name's Brian Garrett. Brian, if you don't mind standing for a second. Okay, just a moment. Hold on just a moment. Let's, let's, let's t take just a little break here. Let's Apologies. We just let Brian stand around later. <laughs> Well, <laughs> That's fine. Uh, you're welcome to stay, but you are free to leave if you if you have nothing. Again, we're going to have to consider what you brought to the council tonight and, and, and uh, review the information that you referenced. So we'll have to get back with you. We're good. I think we're good with that. Can I have a copy? You're welcome to anything. Yes. May I have a copy? I think we already have them. I think the, the clerk has them, but our, oh, okay. or the chief has has them. But you're welcome to leave with us anything that you that would be pertinent to your to your topic. And thank you for making the trip. No, for sure. This is thank the original copy, and that's the newest one that we gave the chief. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now, may we rewind and introduce Mr. Garrett. <laughs> yes, uh, so Brian Garrett has been with the city for quite some time. Brian, do you want to give any remarks or are you good? <coughs> Only if you want to. Mayor and Council, my name is Brian Garrett, for those that don't know me. I've been with the uh, city 13, going on 14 years. Um, I like my job. I appreciate the opportunity to grow in this new position and help the city of Rochester. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Brian. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're delighted you're still with us as all of you that are still with us so just know how that's uh, that's not something we take for granted anything else for public comment i think we're done there so we'll move on then to our special event application for the annual personality festival chief s this is a public hearing which i will now declare open and we'll have good evening again madam mayor members council members of the public the annual personality festival is proposed for October 25th through the 26th of this year. There was a public hearing notice published for the road closure request along with this application. Before you tonight for consideration of approval is the chamber special event application with a favorable recommendation from staff. And the applicant, Alexis, is here, the executive director for the chamber, if you have questions. The highlights for you for your consideration, the proposed street closure uh, begins on Friday, October 25th at 4 p.m. Similar to last year, the application seeks to host a beer garden on Friday night from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. in front of the Kirby Theater. The application includes a request to have food trucks on Main Street near the Kirby Theater on Friday night and then throughout Main Street on Saturday. So. In previous years, they've used Merritt Commons for the food trucks to, to stage. This year, they have a lot more food trucks, which is uh, an, an added feature for them. So they're going to spread that out along uh, Main Street and uh, here behind the courthouse as part of the setup. 
Uh, they have requested use of Merritt Commons. They've requested use of the Roxborough Savings Bank Centennial Park for vendor space. The typical personality festival activities will occur on Saturday. They propose to end the festival at 5 p.m. on Saturday with the roads opening later that evening. And the current insurance policy is set to expire before the event. However, keeping with the historic customs for the chamber, their <coughs> insurance uh, policies expire on the uh, around the 1st of October, and, and they have always gotten us an updated insurance policy prior to the event occurring. And so, uh, with that, I uh, would entertain any questions Council may have for this application. Just as a note, you really don't need the insurance policy. What you need is an insurance certificate. Certificate of insurance, yes, certificate sir. Certificate of insurance. So that's. Thank you for the correction. And that's usual, e usually emailed, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's easily done. It's done in just a couple of minutes. Whoever your agent is, you just call them up and tell them you need a certificate of insurance. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll know what to do. So, so again, this is a public hearing. So, there, if anyone in the audience would like to come forward and address the council concerning you know, your your feelings about the personality festival, I hope they're all positive. But again, it is a public hearing, so you have the opportunity to come and, and address the council. Since I don't see anyone moving, I'm going to declare the public hearing closed. And the matter now comes to the council. This is a special event application, so it does require a vote. Madam Mayor, just as a matter of procedure, um, I, I failed to mention that the application was received by the police department as indicated in your packet on March the 12th, and it was a fully complete. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve the special event application for the annual personality festival. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Phillips and seconded by Ms. Outlaw that we approve the uh, special event application for the chamber. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you Thanks for coming tonight. Okay. Next is budget amendments. Ms. Moore. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Hope y'all are having a wonderful Tuesday night. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so as you can see on the budget amendment that it was included in your packet, we are appropriating amounts for additional police equipment expenditures. This is specifically for de-escalation equipment that would like to be purchased. The total amount requested is 27,000. This includes 6,000 of the fund balance appropriation that is represented by the accumulated asset forfeiture amounts of previous years not expended. It is requested with that to move 4,000 and 17,000 from the special undercover fund for criminal investigation and narcotics respectfully. So that's part one of of the budget amendment. We are also appropriating amounts for additional sales tax refund and increased sales tax expenditures. This is reflected in the sales tax refund revenue account and the sales tax NC and sales tax county expenditure accounts. We are also appropriating amounts for two vehicles that were budgeted for in a prior year that were received for this current year. This is reflected in the transfer accounts and the capital outlay accounts for the respective departments. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Moore? been moved by Mr. Chandler and seconded by Ms. Petty that we approve budget amendment number five as presented by Ms. Moore. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. All right. So 
Moving on to old business, 741 Martin Street special use permit. This is the written decision, Ms. Johnson. Last month you had your special use permit public hearing for this request. Uh, again, this is for 741 Martin Street, otherwise known as the Person County Recycling Center. <coughs> uh, they're adding 10,000 square feet onto the front of their building and making some parking modifications. As with all special use permits, we're required to have a written decision that reflects the proceedings of the hearing, any discussion you all had or testimony given, and then the decision rendered by the council. The written decision in your packet is just such document, uh, provided that you feel it appropriately reflects the proceedings from last month. I just need you to formally adopt that so that we can record the same document that the Person County Register of Deeds and prepare the permit for the project. Is there, language? there is not special language for this. It's there is not. just a simple adoption of the okay. document. Approval of the documentations. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the special use permit. Written decision statement. Written, written decision statement. <laughs> for special use permit. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Outlaw and seconded by Ms. Petty that we approve the special use permit written decision for the 741 Martin Street property. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? motion carries thank you can we check our volume on that microphone it could be me I'll try to lean forward. well I just know it, I, it's, it's been all night it's gotcha. been a little okay. hard to hear gotcha so I, just for the benefit of the audience and our YouTube watchers we want to make sure we're all loud and clear gotcha. <laughs> yes we hear that You're thank you Next, we have the Highland Place Major Subdivision Resolution for Phase 2. Also, Ms. Johnson. Yes. So in your packet, you have a copy of the most recent, albeit not quite finalized, final plat for Phase 2 of Highland Place. Uh, as you may recall, this is a subdivision that was approved while it was within Person County's jurisdiction uh, back in the early 2000s. And you all received an annexation petition as a result of the developer's desire to utilize city water and sewer services for the remaining phases of the subdivision project. So the county, or excuse me, the city adopted that annexation uh, and thereby accepted the vested rights for the already designed subdivision known as Highland Place. At this point, construction has begun for phase two. Uh, lots are being graded, roads have been laid out. Um, Traditionally, with a major subdivision, the process is that all of the site work would be done to prepare the lots, generally lay out the land to reflect what's on your preliminary plat, and then we receive the final plat that sort of creates the legal documentation of what has happened on the ground. As a part of that, any public infrastructure in that subdivision has to be accepted by you all through resolution. Uh, part of that is to document your receipt of the dedicated public properties or public items and then also for the purposes of the Powell bill map any roads that become a part of our maintenance system we have to have a resolution reflecting that so in addition to the plat that's in your um, app, your packet you also have the actual resolution uh, would you like me to read that for the benefit of the audience or just hit some of the high notes I think high notes would be okay, okay. All right. in, the interest of, in, in the interest of our lengthy agenda. Sure. With that, you know, Absolutely. If anyone has anything specific they want to know about this project, you're welcome to read the entire resolution, which we would publish in our uh, minutes after uh, sure. our meeting. So, so in short, um, the resolution outlines that you are accepting the public improvements. That includes, in this case, water lines, sewer lines, and the street system. Um, this is only for phase two, so this will only include, and this is outlined in the resolution, um, those streets that are in that phase two area. Um, that would be Maggie Lane, which begins at lot 66 and 67. The remaining portion of Maggie Lane still remains in the county and will be DOT maintenance as a part of the agreement they made for phase one. Um, also, Andrea Court, or Andrea Court, I'm not certain about the pronunciation, uh, and then Landon Place, all of that 
will be a part of the city's maintenance system. Now this is contingent upon the final plat being completed and then all staff signatures being placed on the face of that plat, that being recorded at the Person County Register of Deeds, and then the actual final um, inspection of all of those items being approved by the city's public services department, uh, especially with the assistance of the engineering technician. Do you have any questions for me about the project, where things stand, or what the resolution covers? I, I do want to make sure that I told a citizen correctly. I'm sorry. Okay. They are in the former phase one. Sure. Days, the county. That's right. Nothing is changing for them. That is correct. At all, tax-wise, water, and sewer, and service. Everything is exactly the same. They remain as they were. That's yes. what. That's what. That's what I told yes. them. I just wanted to double check and make sure. You are correct. Were they worried about the taxes or were they worried about whether they're going to get garbage service now? So. He didn't say. Okay. <laughs> I can go back and look at the message, but I don't recall him saying. He was not upset either way, I think. I think he was just wanting to know. That's right. Yeah, we, we've had a few folks ask that question. Mm -hmm. um, the only annexation is for the undeveloped right. portions. Obviously, anyone that's in that area that wants to be annexed could request it, but only they as the owner could do that. Um, the developer can't go back now and try and annex those properties right. in. be interesting to see how to react when the garbage truck rides by and goes to the end of the street and <laughs> <laughs> picks up at the end and comes back. <laughs> Just curious. So, well, we'll manage that when the time comes. Sure. I will say that was one of the areas that the chief took me into that night we went out. So, I mean, we're trolling even now over in that area. Good. Any other questions for Ms. Johnson? Then we need to adopt the resolution that she has brought forward to Good accept man. the public improvements. I may I also motion to adopt the Highland Place Major Subdivision Resolution for Phase 2. Sure. It's been moved by Ms. Petty and seconded by Mr. Chandler to approve the resolution for the public improvements of Phase 2 of the Highland Place Subdivision. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all. And just for your benefit, we'll be working with the developer to get the final plat uh, as it needs to be to reflect all of our ordinance requirements and all of the utility lines that are on the ground. Once that's finalized, staff will get their signatures on that document and he can have that recorded. Once that is recorded, then we can ben begin receiving the zoning permit applications for each individual lot for the construction of homes. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move on, Mayor, does anybody have an extra ink pen? Yes, sir. Do you like a ballpoint or a... I just won't want it right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think, well, feel free to try that one. I, that, I, I inherit them up here all the time <coughs> when people come and use our facilities. So I, I have a plethora of office supplies up here. <laughs> that's a Sharpie. Oh, that's a Sharpie. Oh, sorry. Okay. How about this one? Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, that's a big deal with that. <laughs> All right. Next, we have the amendment to oxidation ditch repair. Mr. Lockhart. Thank you, Mayor. I think I'm going to need to turn the microphone down. I'm talking mm -hmm. a little too loud. Yeah, it's booming. While completing the repairs to the oxidation ditch, it was discovered that additional change order would be needed to complete these repairs. There will need to be an additional plug valve and associated fittings which will allow the oxidation ditch to function without completing uh, some of the scope of work was scaled back at the end of phase one. At some point, this plug would be removed upon the completion of phase two, but that may be a few years. The expense of this change order is $8,919 which will bring the total repair contract for the oxidation ditch to $2.1 million. Uh, staff is asking council to approve change order number five as proposed. Okay. 
May I make a motion to approve change order number five? Second. It's been moved by Ms. Outlaw and seconded by Ms. Petty that we approve change order number five, which is an expense of $8,900 for the oxidation ditch repair contract. So um, is there any further discussion? Is that also money that we'd, we'd be trying to get back later? Yes. Right. Um, thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Thank you. No. I'm doing that. Well, I know you're doing it for. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so three to one. What? So does that have record? You're, you're, you're voting no? I am voting no. You're voting no. I'm okay. voting no. All right. <laughs> okay. Is this going to be the last change order? No, I don't ask that question. Most likely not. <laughs> Most likely not. They're, they're, oh, it, God. I'm hoping we're through it, but most likely not. Again, this is all part of our legal claim. I know. Anything associated with the oxidation ditch repair is our legal claim. But it just keeps putting things off and off and off. We ever going to get that thing to work? Um, it's actually... It, in that point, it's actually, um, I'll give an update that the manager's report, but it is actually um, under a lot of the components are functioning. We've done the warranty work and tested out a lot of that equipment. Um, so we are progressing the commissioning of that, of that. We have a commissioning plan and the completion of phase one. Realistically, we could get through everything uh, by, by August. And then the real fun starts. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. Moore with the LGC financing update. Hello again. Uh, so the LGC met on Tuesday, April 2nd, uh, 2024, um, and I am pleased to say that our financing terms were approved for the four police vehicles and two garbage trucks. Um, and we have already started that process with Truist to get the ball rolling. I'm currently just waiting on a closing date with them. Um, and we have already sent out to get the police vehicles, which they have arrived um, and are waiting, and as well as the garbage trucks, too. So we have all of that in the process, and we're keeping that ball going so that we can continue to get that funding um, and get those paid for. Okay. How many police vehicles? We had four, four ordered this year. Yes, or, yeah, this year. <laughs> Yep. Great news. Thank you for yep. that. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's great news. Okay. Okay. Do we need to read? Do we need to read? Shame. Is everything good for you? I'll just wait. You just wait. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, Welcome, Ms. Spencer, Hi. <laughs> with the Uptown Roxborough Group Quarterly Report. We look forward to that. Thank you, ma'am. Right um, so I included some pictures in your packet just to kind of go along with some of the things I'm talking about tonight for you. Um, as you all know, we installed that metal art sculpture in the Roxborough Saving Centennial Park recently. Yes. Um, we have since put the plaque up for that um, to recognize the young men that created that sculpture for us, and you have a picture of that in your packet. Um, also, with the help of Larry Cole and Furniture Mart, it is my knowledge that tomorrow we will be completing the project in the park by adding the accessible table that we've been mm. longing to have in there. The public has really been wanting us to add that, so we're really excited to be adding that tomorrow morning sometime between 9.30 and 10, so just in time for the future video this weekend. So we're very, very excited to see that. Right, and just for the benefit of our audience, would you explain what you mean by that? Because I mean, when you look at the park from Main Street, it doesn't look accessible. Right. But how <laughs> so about you talk about that? The <coughs> Centennial Park has three different levels in it. The top two levels, we put in a large picnic table this past year for people to enjoy meals, drinks, hanging out in the space. But we were missing an accessible table component. And because there are stairs at the top and in the middle, we decided to make the bottom accessible because there is flat um, travel along the back side. So we put the accessible table in the rear entry of the park so that we can 
our, our citizens that need a wheelchair or some sort of device such as that will be able to enjoy the park just as well as everybody else. So that will be done tomorrow. So we're super excited about that and very appreciative of Larry Cole for his help with that. He discounted the table for us and he has assembled it and delivering it, doing all the things for us. Um, also, if you all haven't noticed, <laughs> we have a new website that we are very excited about, super proud of. Um, it's the same domain name, www.uptownroxboro.com. Um, it was an investment for this project, but very much worth it, we think. Um, our website previously was tied to TDAs in such a way that if you updated one, it automatically updated the other. We didn't have separate calendars of events. We didn't have separate really anything. Um, so we both decided to branch out, create our new websites. Theirs has been live a little bit longer than ours, but ours still has a couple of tweaks we're working on. So if anybody sees it, sees anything that's incorrect or looks a little funny, please reach out and let me know. I promise I won't be offended. Um, but it's it's just the way we think we need to we needed to do this to help move uptown Roxburgh forward and have our own space to to make our area stand out amongst everything else. So with that is done. There's a screenshot of what the home page looks like in your packet, so you'll know you found the right page if you when you get to it. Um, also, we just got back from the North Carolina Main Street Conference um, in March, 12th through the 14th. Um, our executive. I went as the executive director. Megan Gilbert, who owns the exchange consignment, went. She is the board president for URG right now. And we had a really good time. We learned a lot of things, came back with a renewed energy for all of the projects that we have this year, and we have a lot of ideas for next year. So I will go ahead and let you in on a little bit for next year. Next year will be our 30th anniversary as a Main Street community. Yes. So um, we plan to have some activities throughout the year commemorating that and kind of giving back to our community and thanking this community for helping us maintain that status for 30 years is pretty remarkable, we think. Um, also, I did share it, and it was in the Courier, that Dr. Claudia Berryhill was our Main Street champion this year, um, very deserving of it. She was telling me the whole time, after I told her she was the award winner, she kept telling me frequently, she's like, all I do is plant and water flowers. I plant and water <laughs> flowers. True. I don't know why you're giving me an award for planting and watering flowers. Um, it's more than that. So, we do have her, her nomination letter is online um, on the Main Street website. I do have it if you want to hear it, but nowhere in the nomination letter did I mention planting or watering flowers. <laughs> <laughs> she was very surprised. Um, but she just, I don't think she recognizes the impact that she's had in our community as a building owner, a business owner, a supporter of, of all things Roxboro and Person County. So she was really excited to get that. I think that might be our first Husband, wife, I know, wasn't Lacey? Lacey I think he was, was also a previous winner. I think yeah. he was too, it's so I possible. think that might be. I can't remember. I don't know if there was, an, I don't remember there being another one that were husband and wife. But, so. but yeah, I did mention that in her letter, so that kind of kind of got her a little bit. But um, we are just, we're really proud of the, the efforts that she puts into Uptown Roxburgh, and we wanted her to know how much we appreciate it. Um, also, um, next year's conference is going to be in Mooresville, so if anybody's looking to go to Mooresville for a few days in March, that's where we're going. Um, but one other thing about Claudia, we have Litter Sweep coming up on April 20th, so everybody please come out and help us with that from 8 to 12 on the 20th. But Claudia has donated three $50 gift cards to local restaurants and had Tammy Pereer that owns Tees Farm Quilts inside Hall's Way paint some rocks and they're going to hide them around Roxboro. And whoever finds them that day will bring them to me and get a $50 gift card to a local small business. So just one more way. She's still still trying to help us out beautifying Uptown Roxburgh. Um, coming up, we have a lot of activities. We have our food truck rodeo this Sunday. Please come to that. Lots of yummy food. We have 21 trucks, five new ones that we've not had before. Um, the event will run from 12 to 5 with streets closed from 10 to 6 in order for vendors and trucks to set up from 10 to 12 and then clearing out from five to six. So we really hope everybody will come to that. We have um, already done, contracted with the police department for our officers and the, the change in the contracted rate, all of those things, so we're good there. Um, we have our first cruising of the season next Friday, the 19th. 
so we hope you'll come and participate in that as well. We have a food truck and a DJ as usual for that event. We're hoping it's going to be really pretty <laughs> that night. And then the following weekend, the 26th and 27th, we'll be doing our spring planting. So all of the planters will be getting the new flowers. Hanging baskets will be coming back. They are already at the nursery, thanks to Public Works. Um, so those will be coming back. So by the end of the month, we'll have a newly refreshed uptown. Um, May 17th is the golf tournament for the Roxbury Chamber of Commerce. URG has sponsored one of the holes for that event and is um, giving items for the goodie bags for that event. So if you want to participate in that event, please reach out to the chamber um, with Alexis, who was here a little while ago. Um, also, our Main Street agreements with the state, between the state and the city, will be arriving in the next couple of weeks. So I'll get those to Linda um, for you all to see that. We won't have our new logos yet for our accreditation until probably June, I was told. So once I get those, I will also send those to her so we can update emails, you know, our 2024 20, accredited logos. All I have, unless you guys have any questions for me today. Any questions for Miss Spencer? But get with me, the next chance you get. I've got something to talk to you about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We good? Appreciate the work that you do and all the efforts that everybody makes to keep uptown looking as good as it does. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And it takes a village. <laughs> takes us all. We have to a do really that. good village, though. We do. We got a good good uptown group and so yeah, people that were raised here that live elsewhere I, I run into people you know wherever you go anywhere you're going to run into someone from Roxborough but I've had people actually come up to me and talk to me about how wonderful they think everything looks because they remember the progress or they see the the changes mm -hmm. and that you know, just that the word was that you all are doing the right things all the right things so just know that the the work is paying off people really do notice and they notice outside of Roxborough especially. So Thank just want to make sure I shared that with you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Johnson, next is a petition for annexation, 5022 Boston Road. <coughs> Council may recall that I think it was in 2018 you adopted a policy that any request for using city water and sewer services for any property outside of the city limits of Roxborough, that request must be accompanied by a petition for annexation. Um, the annexation request you have before you tonight is just such a request. This is for a property off of Boston Road. Uh, if you're familiar with Brandon's Wrecker Service and where they're building a new uh, shop across from the Berry Hill RV Park actually on Boston Road uh, that's where this is located um, property owner has not indicated there are any vested rights this would be a non contiguous parcel so that means it's not connected to the existing city limits at any point uh, staff received the request and has evaluated it to verify that um, we really don't see a benefit to annexing the property. Um, there, there would not be a benefit to having to service, provide all of the city services to a parcel located that far from the contiguous city limits. Additionally, we are limited to only 10% of the total square mileage of the city of Roxborough for non-contiguous <coughs> annexations. So we generally reserve those for large economic development endeavors or if we need to build more facilities for ourselves, such as the water treatment and wastewater treatment plant, which are both non-contiguous annexations that occurred in the past. Um, so in short, staff respectfully request the council deny the annexation request, but allow the property owner to connect <coughs> to the city water and sewer services, which are actually both located adjacent to the property already. There wouldn't have to be any extension of lines to service the area. Um, and then obviously the application for TAPS would need to be made with the revenue billing clerk. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have for me. You do have the petition with the property owner's signature, the property information form that we require for all annexations as well. So thank you for this. Uh, I guess what would be the uses of a shop for water and sewer except for the bathrooms unless that's, that's correct. they were going to be discharging fluids of some kind that would be my concern yes ma'am I did how we would control that 
Sure, I did address that with the property owner. I indicated it would be for bathrooms only. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, as a part of their connection, they would be given rules and regulations associated with what can and cannot be discharged into the system. <coughs> um, and I'm not an expert on the subject, but I believe there are also some ways of tracking back to figure out who possible violators may be if they find illegal substances in the system. Okay. I mean, that would be my only could uh, that, sure. that would give me pause to. I know we have other shops that are in the city limits that you know operate and <coughs> operate properly you just make sure that that would be the same yes absolutely. expectation um, the, the residence for this individual is on the same property and the home is already on city water and sewer I think that's the primary reason for the request they'd have to dig a well um, okay. just to service that shop so okay but I agree with about the annexation yes. that's, that's so that begs a question of Now, why did they have to? I guess our ordinance is that specific to where it had to. He couldn't just petition to have the services without requesting an annexation, which chances are we're not going to approve his annexation, but allow him to have his services. So I don't know what he had to pay for a to do this just to say no but, sure but. there's not an annex annexation fee at this time um, it actually okay. is something I've proposed as a part of your budget schedule um, which you'll obviously get later when you have your budget meetings right. um, normally with an annexation petition they would also be required to submit a map a surveyed map uh, we waived that requirement because that would be an exorbitant expense for the individual for something that we do anticipate would ultimately be denied All right. um, it, this is based on the policy that you have today, um, the language in the policy that exists today for such matters. And that, pol and that policy has proven to be very fruitful as we've annexed subdivisions and continued to develop on things that are adjacent to the city limits or contiguous. Um, and to the mayor, to the earlier question, there are categorical types of sewer discharge, but the, the applicant did indicate domestic or just toilets essentially. So, uh, but we do actually track that there, this would go into a manhole. It would be very visible if something um, that's not acceptable in the system was discharged. So it'd be very easy to follow that back. Yeah, I've yet to see a truck shop that didn't have drains of some kind. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. that's my, that would be my concern, is that it would be potential for that. It's illegal to put motor oil in San, in San Jose sewer. That's against the state law, and that would be very seriously taken care of immediately <clears throat> and the hydraulic oil as well I agree with you about the contiguous thing what about a non-contiguous thing we can like revise it. the policy to address that but we have interpreted that, that one single family home doesn't necessarily indicate uh, a, a large commercial investment so we've actually been not bringing petitions for every single home that's come but when it comes to commercial industrial and and major subdivisions that we do still feel that the council should be made aware of it because there may yeah. be a desire to do a sat out as as the planner had mentioned or the director mentioned there may be a desire to annex something that is not necessarily in uh, contiguous depending on what it is well, like we did at north park that's right yeah. okay so what is your what's your uh, Pleasure, Council. Mayor, I move that we reject the petition for annexation for this property, yet allow the city services to be provided. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Phillips and seconded by Mr. Chandler that we deny the petition for annexation by this property owner and <coughs> allow city and water sewer taps to be performed. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you all. Okay. Next we have the Roxborough Housing Authority pilot elimination and new service agreement. Mr. Lockhart. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And welcome, Mr. Lewis. Glad you're here with us. 
So before you tonight, um, you received in your agenda packet a summary of what would be discussed tonight, but before you tonight, you were also given a copy of the cooperation agreement that was executed between uh, Roxborough Housing Authority and the City of Roxborough in December of 1966. Um, you're proposing tonight amendment number two to the cooperation agreement. Um, and essentially, this has a little detailed history and I'll just walk through that real quick. As mentioned in the February meeting, uh, we had a budget work session where we discussed this matter. There's been a request to eliminate the pilot agreement, which is a payment that the Roxborough Housing Authority, it's 10% of their rents when they, um, when they actually are, are, it's a balance of 10% of their rents annually paid to the city. It's a payment in lieu of taxes. And in 2018, August of 2018, RHA had asked for the city to consider elimination of the payment in lieu of taxes. Um, at, the city, at the time, the city did look into the request and were unable to find a path for, pathway forward as the limited maintenance that we perform on um, the, the housing authority properties far exceeded the revenue of the pilot. The maintenance liabilities and responsibilities have been an ongoing conversation for an extended time. Staff have been told by longer tenured staff information on the maintenance responsibilities were and it was at odds with what um, ultimately RHA asserted and the city responsibilities is reflected in this cooperation agreement. In the conversations of the last several months related to the upcoming shelter and apartment city staff was providing assistance in both site selection and zoning. During this property, we uh, during this process, we discovered that the property east of Harris Garden was a city controlled property. We began additional research to find the reasons. We then acted um, and had council vote to transfer the property. As a follow-up to this, we had discussed um, staff doing a deep dive in our records to clearly find what our maintenance liabilities were, as that issue was still not resolved. Um, and then we found a, a minutes excerpt from November of 1976, which enumerated it was incumbent upon the city to accept the dedication of all interior streets, roads, alleys, and adjacent sidewalks which are the area of project N60-1, which is the Roxborough Housing Authority, together with all storm and sanitary sewer mains, package plants, lift stations, if any, in such dedicated areas. It further adds, if and when the dedication, the city will accept the dedication and continued maintenance of operation of the same. So as there was more built out, they would continue to, to support it. Um, at that time, staff was continuing to review to see if this would include Cleveland Lane, uh, it does appear that the intention of the council in 1976 was to provide maintenance. The clerk has done a thorough records review and has not found anything further relating to the maintenance of the RHA campuses. So given that, the city um, it, staff is recommending that the council dissolve the components in the cooperation agreement that are talking about payment in lieu of taxes, waiving the current payment pilots which are due which is from 2017 to current these are not booked as a receivable to the city and they vary every year but the total for 2017 to current is at $61,000 or less than about $8,000 a year um, given that additional additionally staff is also recommending to replace the pilot agreement with a service agreement I'd like to walk that back <coughs> we're just amending the cooperation agreement so we're not going to create a service agreement but we're going to add an inventory to the um, <clears throat> cooperation agreement. So that would include Mount, Mount Bethel, Church Street, Owen Street, Monroe Street, Green Street, Walker Street, Cleveland Lane, Lau Street, Holly Street, South Street. One interesting note is that the city actually is, um, there is a lot of records to indicate that those should be the maintenance responsibility of the city. So. Staff is wanting to just clarify the responsibilities of the cooperation agreement. And finally, a last note, the proposed action is not taking into consideration how the city may, may or may not partner with RCRC, which is um, ultimately the nonprofit that's going to be developing the shelter of the apartments, shelter and apartments, and they're gonna be owned and operated by RCRC. Um, like to add further, the cooperation agreement doesn't make reference to the parking areas. A lot of the parking areas on the campuses of RHA are adjacent to the, um, the street, the lane miles. 
So the amendment you'll see is here. It's a, it's a front and back, and it's at your desk. It was not included in your packet. And what it clearly does is it, it names the roads, gives the road mileage and the lane mileage. Um, we also indicate in here that the municipality will maintain roads, associated star sidewalks, stormwater devices as outlined above, which the agreement does outline that in A, B, and C under Section 6. And um, the, uh, this does not include parking areas, but the municipality will inform the local authority, which is the housing authority, of anticipation to schedule work and attempt to coordinate for the con connected parking areas by the local authority. So what that means ultimately is when we are going to schedule to pave, we can work together with RHA to get a price break and, and they can pave their parking at the same time or coordinate that is what that's basically attempting to do is coordinate when those activities would occur. Because the last thing you'd want to do is create a dip where people go off into park. You'd want a nice smooth surface. And then beyond the, the schedule of roads, um, the amendment basically outlines everything that would need to eliminate the pilot or the payment in lieu of taxes. And one of the reasons, the most justifiable reason, I'll read the one paragraph. Under the Constitution and statutes of the state of North Carolina, all projects, which is referring to housing projects, are exempt from all real and personal property taxes levied or imposed by any tax in the body. With respect to any project, so long as either such project is, public, is owned by a public body or governing, governmental agency, and is used for low rent housing purposes or any contract between the local authority and um, housing administration authority. I believe that's the federal, it's um, HAA. <clears throat> for loans and annual contributions or both in connection with such a project remains in effect or any bonds are issued that are unpaid to that agency as well, whichever time is the longest. And then the final sentence, which was in the original uh, cooperation agreement, the municipality agrees it will not levy or impose any real or prop personal property taxes upon such a project or upon the local authority without respect thereto. So essentially, um, what's being asked or that is, is the uh, council a, a adopt amendment number two to the cooperation agreement, which will eliminate the pilot payment in lieu of taxes, and it will clearly define the streets that are in the city maintenance system that are the responsibility of the city the associated sidewalks, storm drains, and sanitary sewer, which we have been treating the sanitary sewer. And I'd like to thank council for giving us the authority before we got this in front of you to go ahead and do the repairs at Cleveland Lane for the potholes. Um, so appreciate it the, at the February uh, budget meeting, you allowing staff to go ahead forward and doing that. And thank you, Brian, for your guys and getting on top of that. And I know that was a lot of work, so I appreciate that. <clears throat> Any questions? <clears throat> Mayor, if there's no question, I would like to make a motion to adopt amendment number two. <coughs> I, yeah, the only thing I was going to, I won't, I, I agree with you. Uh, I, I, just want, I think you said okay. this, that yes. does effectively, but oh, you so, need a second. I need yeah. a second, then we have discussion. Are you seconding? I'll motion? second. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, go I'll ahead. I'll second. Please. I just want to, I think you said this, the amendment automatically takes care of the doing away with the tax. Yes, sir. Okay. It would do away with that arrangement. It basically just says that we would not levy a tax. There are conditions still. They have to basically be a housing authority. So if it ever right. becomes not a housing authority, then it would be taxable. Any other discussion? It's been moved by Ms. Outlaw and seconded by Mr. Chandler that we adopt amendment number two to our cooperation agreement with the Roxbury Housing Authority. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Can I say one thing real quick? Yes, ma'am. I also want to agree. I've had a lot of compliments about y'all coming to paving over there. So, and then I drove through there to go see one of my friends, my coworkers, and I kept the bottom of my car. <laughs> so I really do appreciate you <laughs> myself. Okay. I'm going to go through there. Personal test. Mm hmm Oh, it's noticed. Thank you for that. I don't drive as much to it as I run through that. Okay. Don't 
couldn't run through there with all them piles. <laughs> I dodged them. I dodged them. Awesome. I dodged them. <laughs> you can run through there now. That. Next is Phase 3 Western Sewer Construction Service Amendment. Mr. Lockhart. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> in an effort to move the Western Sewer Project forward in the most expeditious manner, the city had broken the Western Sewer Project into multiple components, the engineering of the Western Sewer Project into multiple components. At the time, the city had county support for Phase 1 and Phase 2 activities. Phase 1 and Phase 2 were um, right away acquisition, preliminary design, surveying, right-way acquisition. Uh, now that we have full funding, we are updating contract with Labella to cover all phases of the work, which would include bidding, awarding contracts, construction observation, administration. Um, the document is in your agenda packet. This amendment is representing anticipated expenses with inflation from the original quote we had. Um, the uh, phase three would be $933,950. Uh, primarily for the pre uh, preparation of advertising, bidding, construction, observation, and administration, and additional services is related. This will bring that total contract for the Western Sewer for engineering activities to $2,180,900, and this represents 8.6% of the total anticipated project expense of $25,220,000, which we've been awarded by the state. I will note that's in market rate typically you see engineering as the project gets much bigger that percent can come down but you're typically seeing engineering <coughs> in the realm of seven and a, or uh, excuse me five and a half to about 15 percent depending on the size and scope of the project so this is a market uh, this is on target <coughs> Second. second. Thank you. It's been moved by Ms. Petty, seconded by Mr. Phillips, that we uh, approve the construction period services amendment phase three for the Western Sewer System. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Next is sidewalk maintenance acceptance. Supposed to be Morgan Street, Mr. Lockhart. Thank you, Mayor. In December of 2023, uh, Planning Director Johnson brought before you um, and you passed a resolution endorsing NCDOT uh, pursuing a hype impact low cost funding program application for Morgan Street and Samora Road sidewalks. Since that resolution of support, NCDOT has shared a few additional t details. And I did want to and did want us to confirm that the city understands that this construction would become a future maintenance liability for the city. NCDOT expects the application will be submitted for possible funding in fiscal year 25. Upon funding, there will need to be a formal agreement that will this be executed with the city to provide maintenance to the sidewalks. This is similar to the proposed sidewalks on Madison Boulevard, which the council provided a resolution of support several fiscal years ago. Uh, this area of sidewalk will cover uh, includes extending sidewalks on Morgan Street from the existing sidewalk at Huck's Ban Huck Sandsbury over and stopping in front of Huck's Pearl Bradshaw. <laughs> A crosswalk extending in front of Earl Bradshaw and then continuing southward on Morgan on the side of the road, uh, the south of the uh, um, Earl Bradshaw side of the road along to uh, a crosswalk at 57, NC 57, then a crosswalk again on Morgan Street um, south of NC 57, and an extension of the sidewalk on some more road until it terminates at the Senior Center. So staff would like a motion acknowledging that the previous resolution of support acknowledges that we understand the potential future maintenance of the sidewalk. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Chandler and seconded by Ms. Outlaw that we approve this maintenance acceptance for Morgan Street. Is there any further discussion? I'd just like to add, if they don't pave it, we don't have a maintenance liability. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
motion carries. Thank you. All right. And now we are into committee reports. Using Ms. Outlaw at this time. We don't. I don't think we'll have any further actions tonight. So okay. that's perfect. We, no, we, we have nothing else no to vote. Please Be safe. Thank you. I'm glad she's home safely. Thank you. All right. So I don't see number eleven cycle. Okay. Wait. 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 I'm sorry. I'm actually. Committee reports. Where's my tab? Yeah. Have my tab in here. There we go. Sorry. My fault there. All righty. Committee reports. <laughs> So we don't have Mr. Baker tonight, and we don't have anything from Court Tarf with him. Mr. Chandler. Um, okay, the uh, Person County Education Foundation, we have, uh, we're up, we, we've got 69 applicants for the uh, scholarships this year, which is really good. It, last year was like 38 or 39. Uh, and we do have a few more scholarships, but unfortunately, we're not going to be able to award one to everybody this time because this one is going to be about 42. But uh, 69 applicants is, is very good. Uh, uh, good number from uh, person and RC and, and a few homeschools. Also. Um, tab board does not meet again till June. The um, Hall of Fame committee for the uh, high school with the golf tournament is full. And the bank would be in plan. So uh, Mark Lunsford has done a really good job with uh, fundraising on that. It's uh, going to be a record year for uh, funding for that. The United Way meeting, the reason you didn't get your sandwich that day, Mayor, um, <laughs> I, uh, I had something come up that I had to, I, I had to miss that meeting. They did, um, we, we will have another meeting coming up on May 16th, but they have already, they may have already reached out to the courier. I don't know if they, they said they were going to, uh, but they have, they made a list of uh, some, some promising prospects company wise that they were going to be reaching out to. Uh, and if y'all know of anybody that they should reach out to, just let me know and I'll be glad to pass that on. But um, yeah, I, I was unable to attend that meeting. But they, we are meeting again May the 16th. So. Okay, May 16th. Thank you for that report, Miss Patty. Oh, uh, meeting was canceled. Oh no. Okay. So seniors are are okay unless they have to, to talk so. about something. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that, Mr. Phillips, Chiefs Association and Rama. Well, Chiefs Association met <clears throat> last Thursday. One of the things that came up. I'll ask the Chief to help me a little bit. There's a mass communication alert system. Person County prepare, is that what it's called? That's correct. And, and it's, it's a, I'm not sure if we have sent that out. It might be something that we can send out in one of our water bills or something like that about it. You can sign up and if, if, it's, a, if it's a real emergency, Tornadoes coming. Or, uh, it's not just. It's not like the Amber Alert you get all the time, but it's just major catastrophe type alerts or dangerous situations. It, you can sign up to get an alert, whether it's email or text or something like that. So, uh, and I think I, I went in. I don't remember signing up, but apparently I did. Cause yeah, I, mean, I handed it, it out a couple months ago. Remember. It was a scan thing. Uh, I can't think of the EMS director. He yeah. passed. He passed it out of the tab board meeting. Okay. Well, he did it at the chiefs meeting the other night. It might yeah. be something worthwhile to get to all our mm -hmm. out the water bill or something or on the website or something like that that people can sign up for that. So, um, okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. There's a couple of things. Mariah's got a barbecue chicken dinner this Friday. I think it starts at 4 p.m. Timberlake Spaghetti Dinner is 4.20. Person County 
rescue barbecues on the May the 4th. Um, I think they have a gun raffle too, or somebody was having a gun raffle. They have a gun raffle too. Um, one of the things that the EMS director brought up that our 911, no, this was the EMS, I think. 911, I looked down here. Had some openings they wanted to fill. He gave some some numbers on this. They had, I don't know how many, it was at least three open positions, maybe more, that they advertised for. They had 18 apply, 16 agreed to an interview, seven of those 16 showed up for an interview, three were hired, and only two of them showed up the first day. <coughs> I was going to say, been there, done that, and right? That, that's, that's, it's just. Sign the times. You young men, you take notice of that. It's not cool. It's not cool <laughs> to do that. So you know. I can tell you as employers, we're looking for good folks that will show up. Even on the first day, you'd be surprised how many call out sick on the first day. Won't even show up the first day. Mm. So, yep. Yeah, just. Thank you for that report. Oh, and uh, Rama, Rama. Rama met this morning. And, um, one thing Larry Cole brought up, um, I'm not sure. He, he says that somebody came in his shop and from Indian Affairs, brought in, I don't know, they get some kind of form or something to get furniture or discount or something, and they asked if they would have, would um, ask him if they would honor it or whatever, but from Durham, but apparently they said that Durham was sending some of their folks over here because it was so much cheaper. To, the rent and the housing was so much cheaper than here than Durham. So, I don't know. Anyway, that's about the biggest thing that came up out of there. Okay. Just whether there's any truth to that or not, but Larry said he talked to him and investigated or something. Okay. Thank you. Anything, anyone else? Okay, thank you for your committee reports. We always appreciate hearing what's going on and your engagement with other organizations in the community. So let's move on to administrative reports. Ms. Moore? So you've been presented the financials as of February the 29th of this current fiscal year. The general fund revenues extended, exceeded expenditures by 2,084,442. Again, we're seeing the tax in that tax increase that we had, um, and it's being beneficial, and we're seeing that in our departments. Uh, in comparison to the prior year, revenues exceeded expenditures by 1,230,000. 1,062. Uh, water sewer fund expenditures exceed revenues by 451,000. Uh, in comparison to the prior year, expenditures exceeded revenue by 992. So you're seeing the adjustments that we're making um, presently and trying to keep them holding where they are. Uh, fund balance for the general fund is at 34.2%. So again, we do see that reflective um, tax increase that we had in this fiscal year hoping that it will stay steady. We do anticipate it to drop a little between now and the end of the fiscal year, but we're hoping it stays above that 25 that we like to shoot for. The fund balance for the water sewer fund is at 13.07, which again, we're aware that that's lower than anticipated um, and are trying to come up with ways to mitigate that uh, in this coming current fiscal year. The tax report uh, percentage of collect collection is as of March. Uh, so that's nine months in uh, at 97.54 percent. Uh, prior years 97.44. Uh, so we're still seeing that money come in. I, as a matter of fact, I just got the tax report for this next month, um, and we'll see that percentage change just by the decimal point, essentially, uh, going forward uh, from here on out. We budget based on 98 something. I want to say it's like I want to say it's around 98. Um, 
I mean, it's close. Okay. We, um, we do conservatively budget underneath yeah. what we anticipate. Yes. So like I said, it, we should see that decimal point move hopefully closer to 98. Hopefully we can see it a little higher than that, but uh, anticipatingly it'll be around 98. Very good. So what's your goal for the fund balance for the general fund? So fund balance for the general fund, um, we like to see the 25% that's set forth by this council um, and the city in itself. Um, so I'm anticipating if all goes right in my calculation, um, looking at anywhere from 28 to 29%, hopefully. Um, that's barring no uh, real emergencies that need to come up in the next couple months or anything like that. So shh on that. I mean, all the HVAC is new. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm um, so hoping, shooting for that. Um, I'm hoping and anticipating that it will be higher than that. Um, so don't hold me to that or shoot me if it doesn't go their way. <laughs> hey, no, this is very positive. Um, yep. Much better. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Moore? How's water sales going? Are they steady? Has it increased with some of the new uh, additions in the area? Or so we are seeing that number increase, um, and we're actually seeing a lot of new customers come in. Um, we, I would on average say we get around four to five customers coming in a day looking for new water connection services, and that doesn't count the phone calls that we receive about information that they have to have to connect to service. Hmm. That's um, good. Right. That's so we, good. we are seeing that increase of those housing developments coming in, um, those new houses being built. And I'd like to add to that. Um, Janelle, if it's okay. Uh, I will do an analysis as we prepare the budget of where we are versus when capital power left because that's our big benchmark. We lost an extremely high volume user. Um, we'll also look, do an analysis on what GKN's usage is and kind of factor that in when we bring back rate requests in this year's budget coming up. Okay. Residential sales are way up though. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Any, uh, prospects of somebody coming in there after GKN moves out? Are they talking about keeping something there? Or? So Jody Blackwell gave some remarks at Rotary last week or two weeks ago. Um, he's actually, they're having a decent amount of calls. The owners, Chief, you were at that meeting, correct? No, sir. Okay. You were at the one I missed. And I was, okay. Sorry. <clears throat> but Jody Blackwell's uh, noted there are a couple, there are a couple things. Um, I think it'd be best to maybe get I can maybe get a report for him to share with you. But there's been some very interesting movement there. Okay. Good. And good. I just want to make, take note of the questions that Mr. Baker asked in the prior meeting um, were actually an error um, in coding. Um, and so I have gone in and fixed those um, and put them into the right accounts. Um, and that's reflected um, in the water area um, in the financial sheet. So I just wanted to let you know that he did actually point out an error with some coding issues, and we have gone in, corrected that, and um, are now aware of where those things should be going. Thanks. Go, Peter. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate him. <laughs> <coughs> Eagle eyes are always helpful. Mm. The Eagle Scouts, too. Mm. Thank you so much. You. We appreciate your report. Mr. Lockhart. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would like to just pause for a moment. I just received an email. Um, as you might remember, our clerk recently received their municipal clerk certification. Mm -hmm. um, they have been awarded as of an hour ago. They are now master certified municipal clerk. Some title or You're Doctor. Your Majesty's Doctor MC MC. That's wonderful. Yes. That is wonderful. Congratulations. That's super. Thank you. Um, That's awesome. And so on the manager's report, uh, first thing I'd like to note, while it is not in your list of events, it needs to be marked. April mentioned earlier the litter sweep on April 20th. Uh, that's 8 a.m. to noon. Again, that's a litter sweep. It is a joint venture. It's part of the DOT's litter sweep statewide, but locally we're hosting it with a committee, advisory committee from the county. So it's Person County and the city of Roxborough. We're not contained to a specific area. We can go anywhere in the county or in the city. Uh, we do have supplies. We need people. Uh, we yes. did receive. Y'all yeah. are invited. You're yes. invited. Everyone. Two, two, three we is have invited. Great uh, participation from 
scout trips all over the county. We surely do, and I always appreciate. And if you've identified a an area, you know, in, in your neighborhoods, you know, in your, whatever areas you all you all come from, you can work in that area and, and clean it up, and it be part of this litter sweep effort too. So just know we appreciate any and all participation. We do get supplies from the DOT, vests, the gloves, the bags, all those kinds of things, because we leave the orange bags out for them to collect after after the event is over. And you'll see them all over the county. So that's, that's an idea. It's a great project. I don't know if a badge goes with it, but it should. We should have a trash bag. <laughs> Environmental science. Clean up. Environment. Well, it's environmental. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly. I was a Girl Scout, so I have I had badges all over, and I'm, you had badges for all kinds of things. So uh, it's great. But yes, it is a tremendous community, and we do it in the spring and the fall. So if you, if you miss the spring one, you can always participate in the fall one. So. And if you need more details, please contact the city clerk, Linda Clayton. Uh, her email is lclayton at cityofroxborough.com. And in addition to that. If you cannot participate, but you know of a particular problem area, please report that so we can make plans of volunteers to actually go out to those areas. So even if you can't physically participate, you can still participate. So please let us know of some problem areas. Great. All right. So uh, public house, uh, public open house was held yesterday for the uh, pedestrian plan. There will be another public open house. It'll be on the 11th at the upstairs area of the Kirby from 5 to 7. That's this Thursday. So if, you're, uh, if you want to talk about the Person County Trail Plan, which they're going to need some volunteer labor for that as well at some point, mm -hmm. um, or you want to know more about um, or give some input on pedestrians, pedestrian plan here in the city, please come to that meeting. <clears throat> it's not a set meeting. It's floating. You can come in and go. Um, is that correct, Lauren? Is it floating? The pedestrian meeting, is it a floating meeting, the one at the Kirby? Yeah, okay, I thought so. How was the attendance on Monday? <laughs> How was the attendance on Monday, Lauren? The, no, that's all right. The mayor just asked what the attendance looked like Monday. Uh, we had less than a dozen people, mostly government employees. Okay. I think we have one individual outside. Okay. So please come to a Thursday's meeting. Yeah. Make those numbers bigger. Big important uh, budget dates to remember. Capital request budget meeting is going to be at 615 Monday, April 15th here at City Hall. Yeah. I would like to note we are doing a product demo for a water and sewer rate analysis software at the beginning of that meeting. So that's uh, very important to note. Um, we will start that promptly at 615. First draft of the budget will be issued to City Council at your next council meeting, May 14th. Um, and then we have subsequent budget meetings, and we can move those again at the Leisure Council. That's uh, ultimately your decision. Wastewater treatment plant update. Uh, work on the oxidation ditch repair is complete. Heron submitted a commissioning schedule for the ditch, which includes break-in periods for equipment, which would have been part of our initial commissioning plan, even if we hadn't had the repairs that had to happen. This period commission has led to increased workload for our plant staff. And we've also had our second in command at the plant, the wastewater plant, retire. Um, so we have a significant amount of overtime at the, at the wastewater treatment plant, which Nick, I guess that would be part of our stuff to mention to you as well. That's part of the issue with oxidation ditch. The commissioning time is challenging as we'll be finding various items to repair and we'll be in the process of converting our processes going from aeration basins, which are organic bugs or blowing oxygen into the, into the process at, at, in the plant, to basically an oxidation ditch that basically stirs the bugs to introduce oxygen with big flappy rollers that look like a car wash. So it looks really neat. That was for the benefit of folks that hadn't seen that. <clears throat> Um, as far as the um, work is resuming with USRD to reconcile and restart payments for the phase one work, we did receive a payment request in March that's in process, uh, but we do owe them some paperwork. So we're working with the finance team to get that rectified. Lead and copper inventory update. Staff is working to schedule a meeting prior to the council's budget meeting on April 15th to discuss next steps. That meeting did not happen as we've had some staff out 
I was unaware when I wrote that that we'd have staff out at training. So we have not had that meeting. But at this point, the account data has been integrated into GIS. And an idea, an early idea that the team had been discussing was to encourage the residents to self-report the data as much as possible. This will require us to push out information, flyers on how to report. We can leverage our GIS system to allow residents to submit their data directly to us. Um, and staff will likely request approval from the council at some point to incentivize the residents by providing them with an account credit if they submit their details on their pipe. So that saves us the effort of having to track that down. It saves them the effort and gives them a reward for their time. But again, that would only be only if the council approves it. Um, additionally, there has been a, a positive up to up note. Um, funds have been made available through the state for a limited line replacement program via a state grant program. So if we can move quicker on the inventory, we can maybe put a submittal in for a line replacement program to help people replace their lines through monies through the state, which is great news. Western sewer update, the right-of-way acquisition is near completion. Um, we're still at 53 of 55. One of the properties is an air property that had incorrect references from the deed book and page and the title search is underway. The attorney firm that had previously worked on the title search and prepared a deed has declined to complete this task, so we've had to contract a different firm. Uh, the other property owners are having an engineer review the design of the Western sewer. Staff has met with them and explained to them the benefit this gravity sewer would bring for their future development. We anticipate hearing them from them sometime this week. And then finally, Garland Street closure. You may recall in February, the city council authorized staff to advertise a public hearing at the April meeting to notify the neighbors of the council's intention to close Garland Street in accordance with 160A299. In, prep, in preparing the notice, staff found that in March 14th of 2016, uh, the council had already voted in accordance with that or, uh, general statute to abandon a section of Garland Street traveling northeast perpendicular from Satterfield Street. In that resolution, the adjacent owners would be responsible for having a deed drafted and signed by the mayor if they wish to claim their half of the abandoned street. And I would note neither Mr. Van Dixon nor Northern Piedmont Bible Institute drafted such documents. So that's why it still shows as a paper street even though we did abandon a portion of it. So, 160, 160A299 uh, <clears throat> is the clear method for permanent closing a street or alley, but given that Garland Street was never opened, a different general statute could address our desire to eliminate the paper street. North Carolina General Statute 13696 allows for the abandonment of roads or streets that have not been used within 15 years of dedication, and it just requires a simple declaration of withdrawal to be recorded uh, over at the Register of Deeds. Uh, this was updated in the year 2020. Staff has recently uh, requested review from our legal counsel to see if this method would be better used for future, in the future dealing with paper streets or streets that were never opened. Um, and uh, this is not valid if we ever put the street on a map saying it is a street of ours that we maintain. It's part of a thoroughfare plan or a bike ped plan. Uh, it would not apply, so you'd have to use 160A-299 because that shows intention to open the street if you put it on a plan. Uh, it's the intention of the staff um, that we have this addressed in May. The doing the uh, process this way does not require us to spend four weeks worth of advertisement in the Courier Times. Sorry, George. And also requires does not require us to do certified mailers. So it substantially reduces the cost to the city, um, and it also makes things uh, move much more uh, expeditiously in the future. I would note um, staff would still like to recommend that we prepare the legal documents for the folks if they want to take their their portion given that if it if it does get declared as not ours it would ultimately show up on map still as just undeclared or unknown no owner um, so there may be some value if we really want to get rid of the paper streets and helping people with the legal process on that okay. any questions for mr lockhart We'll move on to council discussion, and I guess we need to talk about what Mr. Carswell brought tonight. Do we need to talk about that? Uh, Nick, I'm, I know we have a process. I hear what you, what I'm you, sorry, the, the gentleman about the, the movie. <coughs> Not talk about it. Okay. I, 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 don't, I think that staff is dealing with that issue. 
Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Is that fair? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Mayor. I think the major issue ultimately is is documents just are consistently not being provided in accordance with the spe the special event permit. And Chief Hess can actually speak to that if you want to, if you want that. Let's don't go there right now. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. All right. Um, we'll let you all address that. Anything else for council discussion tonight? Anything on your mind? No, I would like to uh, praise the police department. I, I, um, I personally like to see a police vehicle on my street sitting at times. So, uh, right. it, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Um, and one other thing, we, I, I should have said it when Brian was up here earlier, but when we were talking about the employees, how hard it is to get employees now, and, you know, for Brian to do what he has done and, and work his way progressively <clears throat> up to where he is now is, is quite impressive. And, uh, you know. He's an example. Yeah, that's right. Very much so. Anything else for discussion tonight, Council? Is that your wife with you there? <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, Miss Carol. I don't know if she wanted to hear all those She's good things. She might not have wanted to hear all those good things. So, so. It's good. It's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we we like Brian. We miss you in Roxborough. <laughs> I'm still around. I know, I know, but I know you. She's got, a former courier person I too. I know, I know she is. <laughs> yes exceptional graphics designer too. Anything else for discussion tonight, folks? If not, then we need a motion to adjourn. Grateful that the scouts not only came, but stayed the whole meeting. Thank you for that. You all should, you should take a mouth for that. This hasn't been the most interesting. <laughs> There's a badge for that, <laughs> right? right. That's right, and that's okay. We've had right. other troops that have visited with us, conducted our pledge, the Eagle Scouts, and again, get that, uh, I don't know if it's called a civic badge or God and country, which one it is. But citizenship in the community. Citizen. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Well, we're delighted to be part of your achievements with that, and you're always welcome here anytime. Short or long. It wasn't an 11 o'clock meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have them too. Yes, we do. But we do appreciate Trip 223 being with us tonight, and you're, again, you're always welcome. We wish you the very best in the rest of your school year. and summer coming and all of that it's an exciting time to be a young person so we're delighted you're here anything else motion to adjourn second it's been moved by mr phillips and seconded by miss petty to adjourn all in favor